this video could make your life a little bit better. Hey, what's up everybody? I've been social distancing from my camera and from my computer for a while. So I haven't had much time to put together a video, but I've also been doing really good about this weekly Tuesday video thing, and so I just didn't want to break my streak. So I just wanted to post a video about some new command line tools that I've been using lately. You know, it's really interesting when we think about the terminal, we, well, I don't know what you think about it. I know for myself, I don't really think about it as something that changes often. A lot of the things we do in the command line haven't really changed in decades. And in some ways that's really nice because I can log into a machine, I can SSH into any machine on the planet. It doesn't much matter when it was made or what software it has on it. And there's certain things that I can expect to find on it as long as it's some kind of POSIX compliant operating system. But I have noticed recently that there seems to be a command line renaissance taking place. We've got some great new languages that are picking up steam. I'm specifically thinking about Rust and Zig. Let me know if you want videos on those languages in the future on this channel. But I've also noticed a number of really interesting improvements in some basic command line tools that we use every day. And I wanted to talk about those today just a little bit. So the first is EXA. It's a replacement for LS, and I wasn't really looking for a new and improved LS, but EXA is really nice. So by default, it looks just like LS. The long format is prettier, and it can do stuff like recursively list directory trees. You can change the order based on things like file size. So you can, for example, list all of the files in order from largest to smallest or from smallest to largest. You can control how deep the recursion goes. You can also list things like inodes for the entries. That's cool. And it knows about git, so following git ignore rules and telling me the git status for my files. You know, I may never have to type git status again. The second one is bat. Now bat is just like cat, which dumps a file's contents to the terminal for quick inspection. It's something that I've used all the time for years, but bat is cool because it does syntax highlighting. So my code is so much more readable and I don't know that there's much more to say about that, but um, yes, please, I'm really liking that. The third example is ripgrep, which is an upgrade to grep. The command is rg and it's just, well, it's a lot better. It's recursive, so it'll search through an entire directory and all of its subdirectories for strings in files. That's really useful. It's really fast. The output is prettier. It has a lot of new options, including the ability to search just files in a particular language, and it's aware of gitignore files. That's kind of seeming like a theme here. But the point is, these additions are really nice. Now, does this mean that I'm done with grep and ls and cat for the rest of my life? No, there's something to be said for portability and the fact that it doesn't matter what machine I connect to that I know I'm going to, at least for now, find those tools there and they're gonna work the way I expect. But the point is, is these are some tools that I've been using, I've been really enjoying, and it's great to see things evolving on the command line because that's just not something I've seen a lot in the recent past. So yeah, check these out, like this video if it's helpful, subscribe if you don't want to miss my next installment, and until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you later.